Now, this is case seven, and this is just a fantastic example of something I've never actually seen in practice uh, because of where I live and work in the United States, where this is something that is not endemic. So um, this is an oncosarcoma. This is a nodule uh, that is uh, composed of an adult, one or more adult uh, worms of uh, the uh, oncocerca um, genus. And so Oncocerca, I think the species is usually Oncocerca volvulus. And this is the worm that causes river blindness and Oncocerciasis, of which there are a variety of different clinical presentations. So Oncocerca is mostly seen in Africa. I believe there are a few other tropical places where it can be found endemically. But the, the vast majority of people that, um, that um, are at risk for getting Oncocerca infection um, uh, are in Africa. And so uh, the life cycle of Oncocerca, what happens is that these are a worm that has a microfilarial stage, it means a little tiny thread-like worm is what microfilaria is. The microfilaria gets um, sucked out of the skin of an infected host person by a fly, a black fly called a simu simulium. And the simulium black fly gets the larva, the larva develop, the microfilarial larva develop in their GI tract. Then the next time the fly bites someone, those larvae uh, get out of the fly and into the skin of the uh, next victim. And then the microfilaria proliferate throughout the skin and, and infect the skin of the person and eventually mature into adults. The adult worms get coiled together into a ball, usually in the deep dermis or subcutis, and that's what we see here. The body mounts a kind of a response against it and encases this ball of uh, adult worm in fibrosis and inflammation. So you get this scarred off nodule with some granulomatous stuff and various amounts of inflammation. That is the body's attempt to wall off these worms. But what the worms are doing is mating and reproducing. And you can see that inside the cross section of this adult worm, there are many cross sections of the worm here, we have paired uteri, uteruses, one on this side, one on this side, and inside the uteri are billions, I don't know how many, but many, 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 bajillion little tiny microfilarial worms. So each of those little tiny individual things is a little baby microfilarial worm. And once those are uh, born or released from the adult, they will then infest throughout the person's skin and sometimes get into other parts of the body as well, like the eyes where they can cause blindness. And that's the so-called river blindness. In the skin, they cause intense itching and cause um, uh, really dramatic uh, hypopigmentation intermingled with hyperpigmentation that people have called, you know, leopard spot skin, or they've used different types of words to compare it because it causes this spotty kind of unique sort of uh, pigment variation in the skin. It can cause uh, lymphedema changes, chronic lymphedema changes, and sagging, hanging folds of skin uh, around the fold sites of the body, like the abdominal panis. It can cause all sorts of really terrible, morbid problems for the patients that have to suffer from this. So the adult worm makes this nodule. The microfilaria, though, cause much more, I think, of the morbidity and, and problems. And then those microfilaria are the ones that get uh, taken up by the fly when the fly bites the uh, host uh, who has, is, has an infection with them. And those microfilaria then start the cycle all over again. So I'll put a link down below. There's a nice graphic on the CDC website that shows the uh, life cycle of the, uh, of the Oncocerca uh, worm. So this is a good example of a cross section with the paired uteri filled with microfilaria. And again, look at how many cross sections there are. So the microfilaria are very, very tiny, but the adult worms are actually quite long. I think they can be, um, I think several feet long actually, like almost, uh, I think almost up to a meter in length if I recall correctly. Um, it's been a little while since I read the chapter on this. So um, in any case, they can be a lot longer and they are tangled and coiled up into this ball together here. And that's the Oncocerca. Uh, or oncocercoma, kind of meaning like almost a pseudo tumor made of oncocerca worms. And then over here, I'm going to show you this side, and I'm going to actually get this slide re scanned um, uh, from the study set, and then I'll post it on uh, my Kiko account and put a link down below because this is just such a great example of something that's so rare that I may never encounter in my real life practice and only was able to see in this great study set um, provided to me by my friend, Dr. Tammy Beringer. Uh, my friend and colleague. Uh, all right, and so here, once it comes into focus, you can see a more longitudinal section um, showing the adult worm with the, uh, the uh, uteri that are gravid and full of microfilarial worms.
So a really, a really uh, amazing example of a disease that is um, is a very morbid and problematic in um, in Africa and some other tropical parts of the world. And in the background, as you'd imagine, a lot of eosinophils and various amounts of reactive uh, change. Oh, and I will have one other point. If you see something similar to this and you're, say, in North America and the patient has no travel history, and you might see some degenerated area that looks a little bit like a worm, um, uh, uh, Dyrofilaria, the dog heartworm, uh, can sometimes uh, infect humans, although it, my understanding is it cannot live long term in humans. So in humans, it does not cause heart infection, but instead the worm gets into the skin or subcutis or sometimes the lung and then, then dies and the body cases it off and you get a similar looking nodule to what you see here. Although the, the rare cases I've seen, the worm was like a degenerated kind of necrotic fragment of worm, but it's surrounded by a very similar ball of fibrosis, inflammation, fibrinoid necrosis, and granuloma. So that is another thing I've seen that looked maybe a little similar. And I'm sure that there are a variety of other um, uh, worm or filarial uh, type processes that could cause a similar um, a reaction pattern from the human body.